The final decision of what to wear boils down to four factors. Life protection, defensive skills, elements, and weight. These factors also relate to the panels we choose for our characters, as I will later demonstrate. Life protection is your biggest factor. It decreases LP damage on your characters significantly. Once you pick a weapon and sub-weapon, usually you want accessories and armor with life protection with as high a defense as possible. The skill is cumulative, meaning the more items you have with life protection, the less likely you will suffer LP damage. For accessories, the main candidate is of course Forged Damascus Armlets. It provides life protection and high defense. Armor though is a little harder because of the choices. The most abundant and cheap armor with life protection is the Quartz Rockmail. It provides a good defense without being too heavy and is nearly always available. Obsidian armor is rarer and heavier, hence your character is slower but with a higher defense. On the other side of the spectrum is Padded Mail, which is the lightest armor in-game with life protection. Headgun Fit Gear does not have life protection though, except of course the unique items in Laura's Quest. So most of the time, just equip one with the highest defense. Elemental support is more important for mages than anyone else, since it boosts the damage you deal with the spell of that particular element. The skill is also cumulative, so the more for your mage, the better. If you notice, Damascus armlets have both light protection and water support, again making water the most desirable element in the game. The other armlet is Angelite, which is also provides life protection but instead grant wood support. And as explained earlier, wood support is useless on mages without the rare Thunderbringer spell. As for body armor, Padded Mail provides fire support, making it a staple for most fire mages. Fire support is also available on headgear, including feather crowns and also a variety of bandanas, best being gloss silk bandanas with a whopping 6 defense. You also see water support on silver and platinum head and foot gear, so it's easy to see why water magic can deal so much damage. Honorable mention includes Merman Mail, which provides life protection and wood support. This armor is actually lighter than a quartz rock mail with a better defense, so it's a superior choice. There are three types of defensive skills. Barriers, nulls, and sabers. With decorate headgear, armor, and footgear. Out of all the three, barriers and nulls are the most important. Unlike the two factors mentioned earlier, the skills are not cumulative meaning you only need one of each for its full effect. Barrier skills are the ones with icons in front of them. Simply put, the better the symbol, the less damage you will take from the certain attack type. This only really applies to elemental barriers in headgear and footgear, since most armors also have slash and pierce barriers for reducing physical damage. But there are exceptions. For example, the Merman Mail has a good defense and life protection, but no pierce barrier. Silver and Platinum Helms, however, have pierce barriers which are usually useless on most setups. Putting these armors together will provide you with the barriers you need. For most cases though, the best headgear or footgear is Hydra Skin. With great heat and ice barriers, it prevents quite a lot of magical damage. Couple this with a Roadster Shield made from combining two pieces of diamond, you get a character with lightning evasion as well. Honorable mention includes a diamond crown, which provides barriers against status effects. Couple this with any high endurance or high spirit character, and you have a character who is nearly completely immune to status effects. Null skills, on the other hand, completely prevent the character from getting the named status effect, and is the most important skill against the last boss. Nulling some of the more annoying statuses is a necessary step against his various forms. In Laura and Ventus's quest, the final boss has the ability to inflict Blackout, which instantly KOs a character. Placing a Platinum Armlet for the Null Blackout is a good idea in this case. Myth's variation of the final boss, however, can inflict Petrify, so using Obsidian Armlets with Null Petrify is a better choice. For more information regarding these skills, the entire list can be found right here in the status menu.
finally, there is weight. Weight is a hidden stat in-game which determines a character's speed and melee type. Characters with a lighter weight act faster and deal more damage in battle thanks to a superior melee line. But they have a light and less defensive armor so they take more damage. There's a whole complex formula for calculating weight, and base weight is different for each character, so I have to save it for a supplemental bit. For now, all you need to know is this. If the character is smaller or more fragile looking, it is more likely he or she is lightweight. Give them plenty of melee panels and a light armor, and they should perform a different skill while punching, kicking, or throwing, which would deal more damage. Hey, it's time for some sample builds. Let's use Laura again. Here's her with the physical build I gave her last time. How do we equip her? Well, let's do the no-brainer stuff first. Give her an axe and a black armor. Assuming it's in her own quest, her final version of the boss will have the blackout skill, so her other armlet should be platinum for the now blackout skill. Now, since she has a shield panel, what shield should we give her? Well, although a black shield will give her a greater evasion, let's splurge a little and give her a dragon scale shield. It gives her defense against physical heat, ice, and lightning, so she's set. Now, the hard part. That is, deciding her weight. Laura's a middleweight character, meaning she equips lighter armor, she has access to the best melee lines. Forged equipment doesn't count towards her weight, so we don't really need to worry about that. For the heavier build, just go for the max defense. Obsidian armor, along with any high defense helm or foot gear you can find, and you'll end up with around 39 to 40 defense with about 43 evasion against physical heat, ice, and lightning attacks. The lighter build would use oak padded mail, along with lightweight helms like bandanas. You could even skip on the foot gear if you wish. The defense though is comparatively different, with 17 less defense than the first build, but so is the melee damage. It's a simple argument of damage versus defense really. Just take your pick, there's no wrong answer here. Oh, but what about her mage build? It's a lot more simple than you think. Let's use her warrior mage build as an example, since the equipment is practically the same. Laura is a fire mage, so we need to give her as much fire support as possible. The three sources are, of course, the padded mail, the bandana, and daggers bought in magic shops. Since she doesn't have a shield panel, we'll give her a dragon scale sword, since it has a better evasion and is the best sword in the game. She could use it for deflection, but since she has a sword panel, she can also use it for the rear blade line, which does instant kills. If this is a pure mage build, however, any old sword with deflect will do. Then, just slap the armlets on and you're set! 22 defense, 2 sets of life protection, a null blackout, and 3 sets of fire support. Not too shabby at all. Next up is the tank mage build. Let's use someone different this time. Here's Burst. This here is my favorite equipment set by the way. Burst is the water mage, meaning the more water support, the better. So let's do that. Black platinum armlets with water support? Check. Bestial dagger with water support? Check. Fairy shield made from platinum with water support? Also check. Silver footgear and a platinum helm for the water support as well as pierce barrier and all blackout? Oh, check. And check. And last but not least is the Merman Wheel with a slash barrier on wood support and life protection for the combo. Oh, check. Look at that. Six stacks of water support. As Ruby would say, can't get any cooler than that. Coupled with 40% slash pierce evasion, three stacks of life protection, and 31 defense, this build is hardcore. And that's the end of our 6th tutorial. Our final episode will be Armix tutorial, dealing with farming strategies and in-game exploits. See you everyone, bye bye!